Hello and welcome to Let's Code and Indie Game episode 35. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to add a pause menu to our game, or at least the start of it. Let's jump in. So the way we're going to add a pause menu is we're going to create a different kind of game state. Uh, and if we look at our game state class of moment, there are really three methods it needs to have, or any game state needs to have, in order to work. And these are the three methods we call from main.lua. So we can ignore load because that's just where we do some setup, but the other three methods, update, draw, and key pressed, um, these are the functions which we need to call in order to, um, well, in order for the love. 2D API to make the rest of our game work. So if we make another game state and it has an update, a draw, and a key pressed method, uh, it should just plug in. And then we can write a piece of code which swaps between our game states when certain things happen. So first of all, let's make a new game state for our pause code, uh, and then we'll write the code that swaps between them. So if we go into logic, and seeing as the other one is called game state, we're going to call this one pause state. Return pause, and we'll just do some boilerplating. is equal to then we return our instance and we know that this needs to have an update a key pressed and a draw So let's just make those methods now. So local update equals function. And to start with, our update will just do nothing. Do nothing. Our key pressed, um, it needs to take self and key. Update should probably take self as well. Our key pressed will do nothing just to begin with. And finally, draw. And assuming we have a view available, we will actually go ahead and call our in view. Yep, uh, we have an in display context method. I think for drawing things on the screen. And so we'll just draw or use our view to write, let's see, love.graphics.print, we'll just write paused on the screen at 10100. So this isn't our finished pause menu, we just want enough to, to have something that we can test. So the last thing we need to do is make sure we have a view available to do some drawing with. So we'll pass in our view and just make sure it's set up. So now if we jump into main.lua and let's just run our game, make sure everything is working. Very good. So inside of main.lua if we go ahead and change game to be equal to let's pull in our code first so local pause state equals require uh, source logic pause state if we set our game equal to pause state temporarily where are we pause state dot create 
and we'll pass in the view as well. If we run our game, uh, we now get a much less interesting game. But everything still works, which is the crucial bit. And I wanted to create our pause state before we write the code to swap between them because I wanted to make sure we had something to switch to that was working. So now we know it works, let's actually write a piece of code to manage our game states. Um, we can also use this code eventually to manage things like um, menu screens, title options, game over screens, Every, anytime we want to really change change completely how the gameplay works, we'll end up using this piece of code. And we'll call this, let's make a new file, uh, in source logic we will call this our game controller. And what we're going to do for our game controller is we're going to do things slightly differently. We are going to make the create method uh, privately. Um, and what this means in Lua really is we'll create a local create function um, inside of the game controller module or file and we won't make it available to any of our other code. And this is because we want to make sure there's only ever one game controller in our game. So we'll use something called a singleton pattern to just make sure that we only ever have one game controller. So if our create method is private, we need a um, we need something the rest of our code can call to get hold of our controller. So let's just add controller and we'll call it um, let's just call it get. Um, nice and simple. And we also need a variable to hold an instance of this controller, which will start off with uh, setting to nil. So now what we're going to do is we will say if the controller is equal to nil, when so when controller.get is called, we'll say if the controller is equal to nil, then we want the controller to be equal to create, so we'll make a new one. But if the, and then we will always return the controller. So the first time controller.get is called, we will create a new controller and return it, and any time afterwards we will just return the same version of the controller. And this will make sure we only ever have one controller um, rolling around our code base. So now it would be useful if create actually did something, so let's take a look at that. And just like our game states, our controller needs to have a update, oops, not local, inst.update is update, inst.draw equals draw, and inst.keypressed equals key pressed. So it needs to have these three key methods because eventually we will plug this piece of code in between our main.lua file and our game states. The other method um, that this needs, or the two methods that we need, is one called push state. and one called pop state. And what these two methods are going to do is they are going to control a stack. And a stack is, or it's actually just going to be another table, like everything in Lua we are, uh, we're just going to use tables. So there's our stack. Um, but the idea of a stack is you only ever operate on the item at the top. So you stack lots of things up, but you only, you generally only ever get the first one. And when you push something to a stack, you add a new item onto the top of the stack. And when you pop something from a stack, you take the old item off. 
and what this will let us do is it will let us easily switch between states but then go back to previous states. All will become clear with an example. So let's flesh out uh, push state. So this will take a state and we will use we will push that state into our table. So we'll just call table.insert insert there we go. Um, the list we want to operate on is self dot states and we want to insert state and this will add it to the end of our list so we'll treat the end of our list like the top of pardon me like the top of our stack um, pop state self state so pop state won't need a state pop state will just get rid of the state which was on the top of our stack or the current state at the top of our stack so we'll call table.remove again we're working on the self.states table and now we just want to remove the um, state at the end so we'll just get the length of the table um, of the states table because remove takes the table we want to operate on and also the index of the um, or the number of the item we want to remove Good, so now we have some states. It would also be useful to have a method, and we'll call this get active state. And what this method will do, this is just a helper to get the state which is currently active. So here we want to return self.states length of self.states. So this will get the state that's at the top of our pretend stack. And now we can very easily write our update, create, etc. methods. So this will just we'll just call get active state on self. And then we will call update and pass in dt to the state at the top of our stack. And we'll do the same thing for drawing and for key presses. Self and local key pressed. Oops. Key pressed. This takes a key. So inside of, let's just take this line here. So inside of draw, we just call draw on the active state and inside of key pressed, unsurprisingly, we will call key pressed, passing the key. There we go, so that was uh, quite a lot of code um, so let's get to a point where we can test it there I just uh, take a drink of tea the uh, throat was getting a, a bit scratchy there okay so inside of main.lua let's actually pull in our game controller Source logic game controller. Very good. And now we need to. <coughs> ah, pardon me again. Um, now we need to actually start using it. So, local, we'll just call it the controller here. We can actually stop holding on to game and view outside of the load method now. So we'll just make these local uh, inside of our load method. And now what we want to do is set our controller, where are we? Controller equal to game controller dot. And this is where we can just use dot get to get our game controller. 
and before we run our game we need to push our first state which will just be game into our game controller and now we want to call controller update controller draw and controller key pressed instead of game see syntax error near return on line 12 of game controller not surprising because we wrote a lot of code this needs to equal function okay so everything is still working which is a good sign I'll just uh, do one more room to check that everything is still working yep that works that works we can grab some potions good enough so now let's actually use our game controller so we'll just do a quick tidy up inside of main.lua and uh, get rid of pause state from here and now if we go into our game state we will actually grab our pause state and when we create our game state where are we let's just reuse the view to make a pause state as well dot create we pass in our view so we know this works because we tested it at the beginning of the episode the other piece of code we're going to pull in is our game controller and because we use it everywhere I'm just actually I'm not going to call it GC because it will get confused with garbage collection so we'll just uh, stick with a long name game controller and now hopefully we can get stuff uh, we can actually start making use of this so inside of key pressed I'm going to say if key is equal to uh, let's just say Q to start with then self dot not self dot player whoop. if key is equal to Q then we'll call game controller get to get our controller and so that should be dot get then we will call push state and we'll pass in our pause state let's just save main as well So now if we hit Q, we pause our game. So currently we have no way of unpausing our game, so let's fix that. Let's also swap these values around. And inside of key pressed, what we will do is if key is equal to Q, then game controller dot get to get our singleton or our instance of our game controller and we'll call pop state because we know that if we're inside the pause state then um, the pause state must be at the top of our stack and if we call pop state then we should just go back to the state underneath it which will be our game state so this just means we need to require our game controller source logic game controller let's see so we can pause our game and we can unpause our game and if we notice while our game is paused all of the updates and the movement stops for um, the game state underneath and it will carry on again as soon as we're unpaused and that's why we want to use stacks for this because it create it makes a very easy way of um, making sure all of the updates get paused and unpaused um, when the correct game state is in focus there we go so in the next episode we will probably improve our pause screen make it look a bit more interesting maybe add in uh, a bit more information or a bit more functionality but we will uh, stop there for now Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.